السلام عليكم الحمد لله الحمد لله ونحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك وسلم وقال الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم Dear students, respected teachers I recited a very short surah in front of you Surat Al-Asr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wal-Asr Inna l-insana lafi khusr Illa al-lazina amanu Wa amilu salihati Wa tawasaw bil-haqi Wa tawasaw bil-sabr Wal-Asr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Swears by the time By the time Inna l-insana lafi khusr That no doubt Insan The human being Is definitely in a great loss Illa al-lazina amanu Except for those people Who have iman who are the believers. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And except for those people who do the good deeds. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ Except for those people who encourage to, towards the truth. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ And except for those people who encourage others to be patient. Very short surah, not too long. Everybody has memorized it. But it has a complete message. That is why Imam Shafi rahimahumullah ta'ala, if you know he was a big scholar of his time, he says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were only to reveal this surah, لَوْ لَمْ يَنزِلْ بِغَيْرِ هَذِهِ سُورَةً لَكَفَتِ النَّاسِ It would have been enough for people to lead a guided life, to lead a life which is going to make them successful. Why? Because he says, because it includes all the essence of the Qur'an, all that is presented in the Qur'an. If you want to say what is the summary of the Qur'an, he says it is Surah Al-Asr. Everything is contained. Okay? And now, so what is that important thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in this Surah that Imam Shafi says? That it is the summary of the Qur'an. And if you know Huzaifa ibn Yaman radiallahu anhu, who is a very close sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says after this surah was revealed, it, was because it had become a common practice amongst us that if some of us would meet, they would recite Surah Al-Asr to each other. If I meet you, then I would recite Surah Al-Asr to you, you would recite Surah Al-Asr back to me, and when we would leave each other, we will say salam to each other and then we will leave. It was not, it was a common practice of the Sahaba when two people would meet, they would recite Surah Al-Asr to each other as a reminder. So what is this reminder? What message does it have? It tells us that your life is going in a complete loss. If you want to save yourself to getting in a loss, what do you do? You do four things. What are those four things? You have to have Iman on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to have Amulus Salih. You have to have good deeds. And then you have to encourage each other towards the truth. And you have to encourage each other to stay patient. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts it with Wal Asr. By the time. He swears by the time. And why would somebody would have to swear if amongst us we don't swear unnecessarily. We swear if you want to prove ourselves right. If you want to prove that we are truthful, right? That's when we swear. If I'm trying to tell you something you don't believe me, then I'm going to say, Wallahi, this happened. Then you're going to start believing me. You'll st stay, pay some mind to it. In the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need to swear to prove himself right. Because who could be more righteous? Who could be more truthful than Allah? 
Who could be more truthful than Allah? Then why does Allah swear? To grab our attentions. To bring, to, uh, to grab our attentions. To bring our, uh, so that we can pay our thoughts towards it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna insana lafi khusr. That all of you are in Allah's. So you are in school. Why? So that you could be successful. Somebody wants to be an engineer. Why? Because you want to be successful. Somebody wants to be an accountant because you want to be successful. You want to be, you want to be doctors because you want to be successful. All this that you are doing in your lives, you want to be successful. In this time that you live in, you want to be successful. By the same time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, swears that by the same time in which you are putting all your efforts in, with the same time that you are in which you are doing all this hard work, by the same time Allah claims that you are in big loss. You're not going to get any benefit out of it. So now you're very worried now, right? Because you are very busy day and night. Every day you have to come to school, and then you go home, you have to do certain things. All these things, if it all going to go waste, it's better to go home and sleep, right? At least you get some rest. But that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of you are in loss, except if you want to be out of this loss, what are the four things you have to do? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ You have to have iman on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you have to do good deeds. And this is the message not only in this place, many numerous places in Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you have to have Iman and Amlu Salih. Iman wa inna ladina amanu wa amilu salihat. People who have done have Iman on Allah wa amilu salihat and they do the righteous things, they do the good deeds. So this is very important. All over the Quran this is the message. So if you are doing this, then you have to not worry about anything. So what is Iman Billah? What does Iman mean? Iman means that you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without seeing Him. And you believe in the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said us without even seeing and without even verifying it. You understand? You cannot see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you see the creation of Allah. So you have to believe there is somebody who, is, who has created all this. There is a lot of people today, they don't believe in Allah. That We cannot see Allah, so we don't have to believe Him. But there is a lot of things you don't see. Are you smart? Are you intelligent? Maybe yes. Everybody's gonna say yes because you're in a school. But can you say, see your uh, intellect? Can somebody see you? No. Intellect could be, not be seen, but you still believe that you are smart because you have some mind. But nobody can see your mind. But you still claim that you're, so you're intelligent. In the same way, we don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we have to believe in Allah. Allah says that you, you would die and you will be presented in front of me we don't know, but we have to believe in that. All this we have to see, we have to believe without seeing, without verifying, without any scientific, without any scientific evidence. So this is the biggest fitna these days. People say that science should be able to prove Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no way science can prove because this is above. This is an above. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be comprehended in anybody's intellect. And Allah is above all things that are scientifically available. Okay, and wa amilu salihat. After the iman, do you only believe in Allah and that's it? That I believe there is one Allah and He's gonna save me, and now I can do whatever I, I can. I have to. No, then you have to live a very disciplined life. That is why Allah subhanahu wa taala says amilu salihat. Then you have to do the righteous deed. If you believe in Allah, then Allah is all powerful, and Allah is gonna ask me for what I do. Are you gonna live a life which is, which has no discipline? No. You have to live a disciplined life. This is Amul Salihat. What is Amul Salihat? Do you get up on time? You pray your Fajr. Then, what is Amul Salihat? You, you pray your Zuhr. What is Amul Salihat? You have to have some time for your Quran. You have to ha have good relationship with your siblings. You have to be obedient to your teachers. You have to be obedient to your parents. You have to be kind towards your parents. You have to be nice to each other. All these are Amul Salihat. Amulu Salihat does not only mean that you have to be in the masjid. Because how long are you going to be in the masjid? 10 minutes? 15 minutes for one salah? Is this how much you have to have good deeds and rest of the life you can live whatever, however you want? No. So Amulu Salihat is that every action you do has to be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are coming to school, make it for the sake of Allah. You would wonder how? Make intention that whatever I become, whatever our career I take, in my life, when I grow up, everything I would do, would do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that this becomes what? This becomes Amul Salihat.
Because Amal Salihat is of two folds. One is Azmatulillah, that you have to have greatness for Allah. And Shafqatu ala khalqillah, and then you have to have kindness towards the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you feel in your heart that you think that Allah is great and you th and whatever you do and you show kindness to each other and you do uh, you help each other, this is Amr al-Saliyah. This is Shafqatu ala khalqillah. If you want to become a scientist and you want to become make some inventions, what do you make intention? This is to serve the mankind. So this becomes Amr al-Salihat. But if you, want, if you make any invention thinking that I'm going to make so much money out of it, is this is this Amal Salihat? No. Then you have done it for the money. Right? If you do it so that I can become famous, then this is not Amal Salihat. You have done it for becoming famous, Allah would make you famous. But what happens? In the Akhirah, you would not be able to claim any reward for that. So Amanu Amal Salihat means that you have greatness of Allah in your heart and then everything that you make has to be either for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it has to be for the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you do both of these things, then you are not in a great loss. You are not in a loss, you are in a benefit. That is why when pious people, when they become even older, they, get, they gain more respect. Everybody gives them even more and more respect. They get even loved by more. They become, their life becomes even more valuable. Because when you get old, what happens? You're weaker, you can't walk, you can't do anything. But if you're pious, and everybody respects you. So you have to live a life so that it all counts towards the end, of, uh, until you get older and weaker. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ Then you have to encourage each other to do the good things, to be truthful. So what is the purpose of وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ تَوَاصِي بِالْحَقِّ means encouraging each other, preaching the truth, encouraging each other towards the truth. What does that mean? And what is the benefit? It, the benefit of that is that it eliminates any doubts from your heart. Because insan, insan basically means forgetful. Insan is from nisyan. Insan is from the word nisyan. Nisyan in Arabic means forgetting. So insan, we are called insan, we are human beings because we have this matter of forgetfulness. I tell you something today, a week from now you'll forget about it. That's your nature. But you have to keep reminding each other that Allah is one. We have to be presented for Allah. Allah is watching us all around us. Allah knows everything about me. If I plan any evil, if I plan any bad, if I stay jealous, if I steal something, if I lie to, to someone, nobody is going to know, but Allah is going to know. Right? Let me tell you a story. One time, Umar ibn Khattab, he was walking, he was traveling. And sometimes it was his habit to check on his people. So he was in a village, and he saw a guy who was working for a farmer, who was working for a rich man who had a lot of sheep and goats. So he was grazing the sheep and the goats and he was appointed on that. He was getting paid for this. It was not his own sheep. It was not his own animals, but he was grazing it for some money. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu came across this person and he said, I'm a traveler. I don't have anything and I'm hungry. Can you, can you milk one of these sheep and give me the milk to drink so that I can fill my hunger? So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu who's the ruler, he's checking on his people how honest they are. So this man, what did he say? This, this man who was grading the animals, he said, no, I cannot do this. Umar ibn Khattab, he did not know he's talking to Umar ibn Khattab. He did not know he's talking to his president. Why? Because there is no, there is no media, there is no TV, there is no newspapers. Nobody knows who he is. He knows he's talking to a random person. So Umar ibn, he does not know he's talking to Umar ibn Khattab, but still he says, no, I can't do this. He said, why you can't do this? Your, your master is not going to know. He said, my master is going to know because when I take the sheep back, he's going to milk each one of them. And this sheep, it does not give milk because I take it out right now. It will not milk again, right? It's not going to milk again. And then what happens? My master is going to ask, what happened to the milk? Did you milk it? Did you steal it? Did you sell it for, uh, for some money? Where's the money? So I can't do this. So Umar ibn Khattab, he said, then don't, do, don't milk the sheep. How about you give me the sheep? I'll milk it. And then whenever the time comes, I'll cut it, I'll eat it, I'll slaughter it, I'll make zabiha, I'll make a meal out of myself, and I'll pay you some money, and when you go back to the master, tell him that a wolf came and he took my sheep. 
Common sense, right? Usually a wolf would take your sheep and what can you do? Nothing. So now he has no answer because now the master is not going to know. And then this man right away he says, Ha ha, I know Allah. For I know Allah. Then what about Allah? My master is not going to know. But what about Allah? Allah is watching me. So see, this is the honesty. So you should know always that sometimes say, if I'm tricking somebody and the other person gets tricked, that person is not in a loss. I am, I am, I am the only making myself in a loss. Okay? I'm only affecting myself. I'm only tricking myself. If I think I'm tricking the other brother, in other words, I'm only tricking myself. Because what's going to happen? Allah already have recorded what you're doing. Allah recorded your words. Allah recorded everything that you did. Allah recorded that this is how you tricked the other person. And Allah would give him the benefit of someone else. You think this other brother has to only deal with you? No. He's get, he's get his reward from somewhere else. He's get his benefit from somewhere else. But you, you got blacklist in the list of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is really bad. So always think how I'm, going to be, uh, how I'm getting recorded in the eyes of Allah. You will not do anything inappropriate. Because if your teachers are watching you, are you going to do something inappropriate? No. Why? Because you don't want to get blacklist in the list of your teachers. When your teacher is out, that's when you do all the stupid stuff. But Allah, Allah is always watching you, always constantly watching you. So you have to keep reminding. This is tawasi bil haq. And then tawasi bil sabr. Tawasi bil sabr means that you have to stay patient. You have to stay patient. Whenever the hard times come, you have to stay patient. Sometimes the shaitan comes on you. And he is, he is increasing your desires. He wants you to do something really bad. Now at that time, you have to stay patient. And you have to get some good company right away. Don't stay alone when the shaitan is telling you to is inspiring you with the desires that are to disobey Allah that is about something wrong, something bad, then try to come in a good company. You know, when you are in a good company, you don't feel like doing bad. And when you are in a bad company, that's when you try to do bad. Right? So you have to stay patient when the, when the shaitan is affecting you. You have to stay patient when you feel lazy for the salah, when you feel lazy for reading the Quran, when you feel... When you feel that you want to disobey, you want to speak up in front of your parents, when you have to be disrespectful, to, disrespectful to, towards your elders, at, this, at that time you have to stay patient. So you think this is a good message, right? Pretty good message. Because your Iman and Amr al-Saleh, they, they go hand in hand. They, these are the two wings of the birds. If the bird has two wings, he can fly. And Iman needs to be protected and then it gets protected by Tawasi bil Haq. Your Amal needs to be protected and they get protected by Tawasi bil Sabr. So all four elements are important in your life. And if you are doing these four things, then become happy. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make you successful and you're going to have a happy everlasting life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.